Oh boy, I know the Lamar Jackson haters, they would love this idea. Team Keep It Clean, what's going on? It's Engraven here with another video, and today, boy, mm, Glenn Clark Radio, they had on a very special guest, um, in former Dolphins and Saints GM, former Chargers and Seahawks executive, uh, Randy Moeller, and he proposed a plan for the Ravens to put in place to where they prepare for life without Lamar Jackson by drafting another quarterback that would give them options, that would possibly give them some leverage with this whole contract negotiations or actually lack thereof. But before we break it down, let's listen to his breakdown of this plan. Well, Here's my thinking, and, and let me just say this. Nobody's trying to replace Lamar Jackson. That's not the idea. That's not the, the, the theory in what I'm talking about. I just know this. Having sat in the GM chair for many years, I made my worst deals. I think most GMs would concur with their own plights when you don't have options, mm. when you have to make a deal for X amount of dollars that you're nervous about making. Mm. I just think the league, the team building, that taking care of your own team, is best served when you have options. So my thought. So first he talked, excuse me, about his experience as a GM. And he said that he made some of his worst deals when he did not have options well, on contracts where you're nervous. So he sort of implied that the Ravens are nervous about giving Lamar Jackson this contract. I mean, who knows? But he said he made his worst deals. Um, when they were nervous about giving a player money, uh, but they, they didn't have any options. So they didn't, they didn't have any leeway. But let's, let's, let's continue. <laughs> if they can find a way to have a consensus in their own building on an option at quarterback, and again, I'm not talking about taking one early, but round two or three may just be the right time this year to take one. I think it makes some sense to them. I think it gives them some some leeway. I, hey, nobody can force Lamar to sign a contract. If he is not willing to, like what we hear and read, right. that he's not ready to do that, you've just got to look out for your own franchise. And I think this does that. It just gives you an option. One, might help you in negotiating, but two, it's just going to help your team move forward a little bit with an option that doesn't exist currently. Mm, 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 mm. So, um, he talked about Draft, not drafting a quarterback early. He said the Ravens, they wouldn't have to draft a quarterback early. But I think in rounds like two or three, they could do it. Let me know if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. Maybe I'm looking at it from a way that maybe I'm just not getting it. But wouldn't, if you have a quarterback right now, you have a quarterback under contract this year, and he's obviously a franchise quarterback. If you draft another quarterback, again, you have a quarterback in place, but if you draft another quarterback in rounds two or three, wouldn't that still be considered drafting a quarterback early? It, to, to me, it would, especially when you have a lot of other holes on the roster that are much more important than quarterback for you right now. Um, so anyway, um, but he talked about this would give the Ravens options, like a sort of a backup plan of a just in case. Um, and it could possibly uh, give them some leverage and help out with contract negotiations. He said they, they can't force Lamar Jackson to sign a contract. Cause they, they can't. They can't do that. No, it, he will sign when he's ready, when they come to terms and. Who knows the reason that he doesn't want to sign right now? It could be because he could feel like, hey, last year, numbers weren't so pretty. Um, and since they weren't so pretty, Ravens are going to want to negotiate off of those numbers and be like, hey, da -da -da -da. since I had my first major injury, they're going to want to negotiate off of that. And, and I'm like, hey, uh, I don't think so. Let me go bet on myself this year. Let me go prove myself this year. And let me then then we'll talk. Again, that's my thinking. Lamar Jackson hasn't said anything, but by his actions, they lead me to believe that's what it is, that he wants to bet on himself. He wants to prove to the Ravens why he deserves that top dollar. Um, I mean, I think he's already proven it, but yeah, go ahead and prove it yet another season. Go do your thing. I ain't mad at you. Um, but as far as drafting another quarterback, what would that do? for the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. Mm. Well, 
Uh, a couple of things. Well, for the Ravens, he he did mention how you got to take care of the franchise first. You got to put the franchise first. You got to take care of your team first. And we know that. Uh, any franchises like that is the franchise over the players. Um, it's, they put themselves first. And that's business. It's nothing new. It's not a secret or anything like that. Um, but that would be them staying ready so they ain't got to get ready. Now, with that. If you think about the possible worst case scenario, Lamar Jackson goes out there and plays this year and he doesn't resign next year. And he he left for whatever reason, whether the Ravens traded it, they franchise tagged him and traded him or he just left in free agency. Whatever happened, if he left, you run some very big risks with that. Very, very big risks. Um, one, um, you have. That's a lot of pressure on your next franchise quarterback, that guy who you drafted in round two or three. and um, Because you've had – your first franchise quarterback was Joe Flacco. And that was your first ever franchise quarterback. The guy that you knew every year, week one, who was suiting up. You knew what you had in him. He, of course, delivered all those playoff wins and the Super Bowl. Joe Flacco did his thing. He was there. your first – franchise quarterback and now you had Lamar Jackson and at that point they would have had a Lamar Jackson and you saw everything that he's done for this team this team was headed nowhere fast but he brought them back to life in an instant an instant and Lamar Jackson is primetime TV um he like really elevated the Ravens big time big time um, so he's given you so much so quickly. And of course you still want more, we want more playoff wins and eventually a Super Bowl. But for what he's done so far, it's like, whoa, like we love everything that Flacco did, but for this transition has been a, a very nice transition from one Flacco to Lamar. A lot of times, a lot of franchises, when they're transitioning from one quarterback to whoever's next, it can get a little ugly. It can get very ugly. But this transition, it hasn't been ugly at all. So if they were to do another transition, you run the risk of it being ugly. You run the risk of this next quarterback just ooh, not being so special. I mean, he, he could end up being special, but he also could end up not being special. But whatever you go to, and, and I mean, Again, they're, they're backups, and it's no disrespect to them, but whatever you go to next from a Lamar Jackson, oh, boy, it's, it's almost not going to be fair for that person to step into that situation. I mean, we saw Tyler Huntley. We saw Josh Johnson. Is We've seen at times RG3. So we, we've seen it, and it's, it's a, it, there's a drop-off. There's a significant drop-off, and we see that. But... If the Ravens were to draft a quarterback, they run a lot of risks. Hey, it could work out, but it also could not work out. And that's part of business. In business, you, you run risk. You do some stuff where it's like, ooh, I don't know if this is going to work, but hey, I'll try it. But you usually run risk when you don't have a plan, when, when, you, uh, when whatever you normally do, um, it's just it's not working. And in this case, with Lamar Jackson in the contract situations, usually when Ravens want to negotiate with somebody, usually that person will negotiate, that player will negotiate, and they'll make some stuff happen. But Lamar, again, apparently told him no. He said, oh, I'm good for now. We'll talk about that later. Now, one of the other risks that you run um, is alienating a fan base. Um, if you... Draft a quarterback and Lamar Jackson leaves, you're going to lose. I mean, you're going to keep the majority of your fan base, um, but you are going to have a lot of upset people, a whole lot of upset people. And I know like a, some, I know there's going to be somebody in the comment section, oh, the fans don't matter. The fans, they don't make business decisions for the team. They don't impact the team. They don't, they, they don't uh, do anything for the personnel. They don't sign anybody. They don't trade for anybody. They, they're not drafted. The fans are just fans, and fans should stay in their place. Well, let me tell you, uh, fans, they're the one that buy tickets to the games. Fans are the one that shows up in all kinds of weather to watch their favorite team and their favorite players play. 
Fans are the ones who buy all these jerseys. Fans are the ones who buy all this memorabilia. Fans are the ones who got these hoodies. They and they get on here and they talk. Fans, they, they have a lot of impact on franchises. So do not underestimate the power of a fan base because it is significant. But most importantly, you run the risk of that quarterback not working out. You run the risk of alienating the fan base. But most importantly, you run the risk of alienating Lamar Jackson if you draft a quarterback. And that's even before uh, you even decided to run with that quarterback. This is before if, if you decided to trade Lamar, let him go. This is before as soon as you draft a quarterback, especially in rounds one, two or three. If you draft a quarterback, you run the risk of alienating the guy who apparently you want to get a contract done with. What kind of message would that send to Lamar Jackson if the Ravens drafted a quarterback? That would be them letting him know, OK, hey, appreciate you, but it's probably going to be a last ride, dog. I mean, you don't remember uh, Joe Flacco? Joe Flacco knew. He knew what time it was as soon as they drafted Lamar Jackson. He, he already knew. We already knew. It was obvious. That would be it. And Lamar, he knows the game on the field, but obviously off the field as well. So if contract negotiations weren't going good now, you draft the quarterback. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah they're going to go south quick. Quick. I just and I know how some people some people view it like this. Some people are like, oh, man, well, if the Ravens would draft the quarterback, that could give Lamar Jackson extra motivation to go out there and do his thing this year. I don't think he needs any extra motivation to go out there and do his thing. I mean, he, he always super motivated. That's not a question. Lamar Jackson is, um, as we have seen and heard plenty of times, he is his own biggest critic, own biggest critic. Um, and a lot of times he lets outside critics get to him too. So he, he doesn't need any extra motivation, but the Ravens would run that risk of alienating him and contract talks and just relationship with the team because another reason, because he doesn't have an agent. And the reason that I bring that up is because any dealings that the Ravens have with Lamar Jackson, anything, they're not talking to an agent, and then, and then that agent, he rel relays the message to Lamar. No, they have to talk to Lamar Jackson directly, directly. You have to look him in his eye, not his agent in his eye. You have to look him in his eye and try to justify the reason why you drafted a quarterback, but you still want him to sign a deal. Really, really. It's, it's risky business, and I do not think, if, if the Ravens went with that strategy, I do not think it would end well. I, I, I really don't. Not, well, I don't think it would end well as far as Lamar Jackson and the Ravens coming to a contract agreement. I don't think it would be like, oh, man, Ravens drafted a quarterback. All right, let me go sign that deal now. No. I mean, it could, but I, I just wouldn't see it happen. Because it would show that, again, even if it's in rounds two or three, but it would show that the Ravens are willing to invest some capital into their next guy. And even though they have their guy right now. So as far as uh, Randy Moeller's plan, I see what you're saying, but nah. I just think, um, yeah, it would give the Ravens another option. It would. Uh, but I, I wouldn't do that. I, I, I would not walk on that thin, icy water. I, 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 I wouldn't do it because it just it wouldn't be worth it to me. It wouldn't be worth it. And, and I just think that it's there's a lot more negative that could come from it than positive. Um, and the Ravens, Ravens really have to figure out how to handle this Lamar Jackson situation, in my opinion. And what I mean is I feel like they've done they've done an all right job uh, with how they've 
built the team around Lamar, but they they also could have done a lot better. A lot better. And I really think that this year, this offseason, which is, is still a young offseason, we, we're only, uh, we're not even a full month into the offseason. It started, what, officially on like March 14th, something like that. So we're not even a full month into the offseason. But so Ravens could still make a lot of stuff happen. We'll see what goes down, but they really, I mean, they, they should have been on this a long time ago, though. They, 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 they should have been on this a while ago. Like, the first year where I, I couldn't give them any excuse for not being on it was 2020. That was the first year where they had absolutely zero excuse for being on it, for really going all in for that guy. And I know you're a lot of y'all tired of hearing me say this, but I'm not tired of saying it because the Ravens haven't done it. Because you, rookie year, they obviously couldn't have gone all in on him because it was a lot of unknown. And he was a rookie. It was still Flacco's team. Then, of course, the transition from Flacco to Lamar. All right, he took over. He ran them into the playoffs. Then they got ran out the playoffs. <laughs> so then, second year, it's like, okay, still a lot of unknowns. We don't know how he is as a full-time quarterback. It's going to be his first offseason as a starter. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool. You ain't go all in then. Uh, okay, cool. No problem. You drafted Hollywood in the first round. That was Lamar's request. Um, got this guy. You drafted Boykin in the third round. You added uh, Seth Roberts. Uh, you still had Willie Sneed. Um, Mark Andrews was emerging. He was the top tight end. Okay. You uh, brought in Mark Ingram, uh, Earl Thomas. Again, they went 14-2. and two. Beautiful, beautiful season. And it's like, oh, he led the league in touchdown passes, 36 to 6 interceptions. One unanimous MVP. Wow. In his first full year starting, he won the unanimous, M unanimous, MV unanimous MVP in his first full year starting? What? That's insane. So, all right, we got a unanimous MVP quarterback. Wow. Whoa, yeah. Let's go all in on this guy for sure. Let's do it. They didn't. They didn't. 2019, he wins unanimous MVP. He is regarded as he was the best player in the NFL in 2019. He was the best player in the league in 2019. How do they follow that up in 2020 with the construction of the roster? They didn't go all in. That's perfect opportunity because he showed you what he can do. And the, the thing that made it more frustrating for me, especially when we look back, it's like, man, he showed you what he could do with a Hollywood that was injured. Miles Boykin, Seth Roberts, Willie Sneed. He showed you what he can do with those guys at wide receiver. The offensive line, they were better. Obviously, Marshall Yonder made such a big difference. They had Ronnie Stanley for the whole year. Had Orlando Brown. Like, he showed you what he can do with a quality offensive line and the wide receivers being, uh. So, why not continue to give him a quality offensive line? Yeah, Marshall Yonder, he retired after that. But why not give him a quality offensive line? And then really upgrade those wide receivers that much more. Why not do that? Why not? But the Ravens were like, no, we, we're not. We're not going to do that. So then in 2021, this last season, they drafted Rashad Bateman. I like that. I had actually loved that. You can go back and watch that reaction video to that if you want to see how much I loved it. I, I loved it so much. But it's like, okay, we got Hollywood. Okay. Got Devin Duvernay and Proche from last year. Okay. They drafted Rashad Bateman, Tyler Wallace. Up. But as far as bringing in a, a veteran wide receiver who's not washed up, who's not old, uh, but they brought in one that's just really damaged goods. And that was Sammy Watkins. And I was just talking to my guy Josh about this the other day. Um, I remember when Raven signed Sammy Watkins. I remember so many comments in the comment section and videos that we were doing Sammy Watkins. A lot of Chiefs fans came through. Oh, the six game Sammy. That six game Sammy. And I'd be like, ah, I can't argue with you, but hopefully he'll be healthy for the Ravens. Maybe a reduced role or something. We'll see. We got like six games out of him. Got like six games out of him. And that was it. So the Ravens just really at the wide receiver position, it's been quantity over quality. At tight end, 
They got Mark Andrews. They they even gave him his extension. Great job there as far as their first tight end. Now, the backup tight ends has been a little rough. Nick Boyle, of course, been hurt and whatnot. Um, and they traded away Hayden Hurst, never quite really replaced him. They tried the Josh Oliver project a little bit, but he didn't really get much action his way last year. But um, So they, they, they could still do some upgrading there at backup tight end. But at least the first string is A-OK. But as far as wide receiver, wide receiver um, you got a Hollywood, you got a Bateman. Nice one-two punch. Um, but it's Ravens could really, they, they could have done so much more. So much more uh, for their quarterback. And there's literally no excuse as to why they haven't. It should have started in 2020 after that MVP season. Because he proved to you exactly what he could do. It should have started in 2020. It, it should have been in 2021 as well. And it, it needs to be now in 2022 too. I keep hearing people, when, whenever we talk about the contract, I, I keep hearing a lot of people say, Lamar Jackson... He should sign his extension right now because it would give the Ravens cap room. And that is true that it would give them cap room. It would alleviate a lot of cap space for these Ravens. But that's a big risk that I don't think he should take. Because what have the Ravens done when they've had all the cap room before his cap hit was 23, 24 mil like it is this year? What have they done for him when they've had the money sitting there? Why should he be like, all right, I'm going to sign a deal. So all right, I'll give y'all some more cap space. What are they proving that they're going to do with it? What are they going to do with it? So this, they got to step it up, man. They got to step it up. They got to step it up. As far as building, building, they got to step up the roster construction quality over quantity not just bodies but quality players game changers and i, I say all this to say no, lamar's not innocent in all this as well lamar got stuff that he got to step up on too for sure we talk about that all the time as well lamar got stuff he got to step on too man as far as holding the ball the the, the, the quick game and, and living to play another down throwing the ball away um, throwing receivers open, timing routes, fade routes. They, they got a lot of stuff they can implement. And it's a make, and, and getting, getting different guys involved more, building trust with other guys besides Hollywood and Mark Andrews, and really just opening it up. And that's, that's a mix of Lamar. That's a mix of Greg Roman. But, yes, yeah, that's on everybody. But, yeah, Lamar, certainly he got to step it up too. But the Ravens, again, their, their roster construction this is like, not that this is the last year that they can do it, but yeah, this is, this is the, right now, like obviously every year before now too, but right now, this is the cheapest that Lamar is going to be, the cheapest, because if it comes down to all this franchise tag stuff next year or next two years or next whatever, that price tag goes up. That cap hit goes up. It goes way up. And shout out to Big Sean, but the way the price tag is going to go way up, Lamar going to feel blessed. He's going to feel blessed. Because <laughs> all that money, they're going to be like, well, there you go. But I, I just, they got to step it up, man. There's no excuse. No excuse. And I also hear people say, oh, man, the Ravens, what, what, what does Lamar expect him to do? Or what do y'all expect him to do if Lamar won't sign a contract and the, he got a 23 mil cap hit? So what, what do y'all expect the Ravens to do if he got that and the, the cap hit, the, his cap hit could go down if he signed a deal, but he's not going to sign a deal? Wow, that's selfish, man. No, that's not selfish, man. That ain't selfish. That's, the Ravens got to prove that they are actually going to do something. They have not proven that yet, man. They ain't proven that yet. When are they going to prove that? Ain't, ain't no excuses this year, man. And, and that's the thing, too. The Ravens, they know, y'all know, oh, y'all, a lot of fans always talk about how the Ravens, they always planning ahead. They always planning ahead. They always planning for down the road. That's how they do with their draft picks and stuff. They plan for down the road. That's how, how they do with their, uh, their, their cap, uh, their cap um, responsibility. They plan for down the road. 
They don't like spending in future years. They don't want to go crazy like a lot of other teams been going. They don't want to do it. They want to do it their way. But with them, they always got a plan in place, a plan for down the road and whatnot. They, EDC, EDC was on a five-year plan a while back. Back in, what, 2014? They had him on a five-year plan. Like, all right, you're going to take over then. So what I'm saying is that the Ravens, they should have been planning for this. They should have been planning for his cap hit to be significantly more than it what it had been. So they should have a plan in place. But as far as drafting another quarterback, <laughs> that ain't the one. 